guys, today on the Humble Sequin we're going to talk corsets. Now, um, a lot of corsets that you're going to buy are going to come laced in a way that is not necessarily maximal for A, getting them off quickly on stage and B, getting that perfect hourglass shape. So what we're going to do is show you how you can take a corset that's laced like this into a corset that's laced like this. So this corset that we're looking at here is um, one that's come as it's come straight from the store. It's a beautiful corset, uh, but it's got a style of lacing that I don't particularly enjoy. Uh, this is what you call a bit of a fishtail type lacing where basically all of these laces are just kind of feeding in and under themselves. The other style of lacing that you might see that uh, I don't have here is you'll find rather than having these two waist loops, you might find your corset has come where it ties at the very bottom. The issue with that type of lacing on a corset is it's not going to give you much of a waist. You're going to find you're tightening all of your corset from the hips rather than the waist and we're always trying to tighten our, our corsets at the waist. So what I've done. I've prepared a corset that I've already unlaced for us and we're going to have a look at how you lace up this corset. So I've got my two parts of my corset. This is another what Katie did corset, they make beautiful ones. First thing first, what we're going to want to do is we're going to make sure that we are clear on which is the top and which is the bottom of the corset. It might sound simple but uh, it's an easy one to get confused. Um, when I'm looking at my corset here, if you have a look at how it splays out on that side and that side, you'll generally get a wider edge on the bottom edge. Uh, also, often the labels in the top, so that's a handy one there. Great. So, confirming that's the top, which I'm going to lay towards the camera. And the bottom side is facing towards me, so that's where we start. Uh, we've got some lacing. I showed you earlier a corset that was done up with ribbon. I think ribbon looks beautiful, but if you're wearing a corset on stage, ribbon isn't necessarily going to be that great for you because it's not going to slide through those holes fast enough for you to do a quick release. Um, I prefer something that's more of a thin cord like this. You can also get a round cord uh, like a rat tail. You can just buy it at your local fabric store. So um, something that's going to be easy to slide through the holes. I'm starting at the top part of my corset. So remember this is the part of your upper back. And I'm just going to take my lacing through the top and underneath on that side. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. Great. And then I'm just going to pull that through so that I've got an equal amount going through on both sides. I like to have it sitting quite wide while I lace it. It's going to be easier to see what I'm doing when I pull it tight at the end, you'll see. So now that I've gone from the top and underneath on my first hole, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to come from the underneath and up through onto the next one. Okay, so what we've done is we've now laced it just up until where the waist is on the corset. If you're not sure where the waist is on your corset, you can usually find it by just having a little feel. And if you can see there, most corsets will come with a little waist tape. So the idea of the waist tape is that it's about pulling you in. It's also, if you looked at this, it's the smallest part of the corset there. So that's where my waist is. So, rather than continuing my cross over, cross under patterning, what I'm now going to do is take this one and feed it back through on the same side so that I've created a loop. So this loop is what we're going to use later when it comes to actually tightening the corset. So, and then we'll create a loop on the other side. on both sides and again we're following the same pattern so it's come under it's going to return under again so back to that crisscross pattern what I'm just going to do now is I'm going to take my two ends 
the end and I'm just going to tie them into a little knot. So you should be able to see now there a much clearer idea of what my pattern is. So I have an X that comes over, an X, I have my two middle sections, another X, another X. Great, shall we try it on? <laughs> 